So I want to start off with a question for you guys, for all coolest out there. If you could beat just one of Bayern Munich or Real Madrid, who would you pick? Which team would you pick to get the three points against? Bayern Munich in the Champions League or Real Madrid in La Liga? Let me know because I think this could very might as well be what Hansi Flick is thinking about these two upcoming games. So let me know in the comment box down below. That is a tremendous question. I'll give you my answer by the end of this video. What's going on guys? Como están? Bugalis here. And of course, today we're going to talk about the humongous game between Barcelona and Bayern Munich in the Champions League. This is such a tremendous affair because it's it's a while. It's been a very long time since Barcelona have looked this, this good. And Bayern Munich has also looked good in their own right. But I think the teams are much more balanced in terms of quality and strength. So something might give. And finally, Barcelona might be able to beat Bayern Munich. Something that they have not done since all the way back in 2015 when they left the treble with the MSN, Messi, Suarez and Neymar. If you didn't know, fun fact, Barcelona and Bayern Munich have faced each other 15 times. And out of those 15 times, Barcelona has only won two matches. Just two matches. That is a tremendous, horrific record that Barcelona hold against Bayern Munich. And so, as we say in Latin America, Bayern Munich are los papás. Son, son los papás de Barcelona. Y Barcelona son los hijos. They are really just being dominated by Bayern Munich in every metric in every stat in this competition, Bayern Munich really, really do hold Barcelona accountable. So guys, here's where I want to pose to you my second question. Is this time Barcelona the favorites? Are Hansi Flick's team the favorite against Bayern Munich in this turn of events? Because of course, when I ever talk about Bayern Munich, people would just go right ahead and tell me, oh, but they're managed by Vincent Company. What does he know? He needs to manage Burnley, you know, and they got relegated. Uh, I mean, yes, but Bayern Munich still have a tremendous team. They have incredible players and they have not been doing, let's say, as bad as previous seasons. So certainly Bayern Munich are someone to be very careful when you're looking into this game. And for that, I want to talk about the previous form, the recent matches of these two teams. So first of all, if we take a look at right now, at Bayern Munich, for example, here on screen, you'll be able to see their last game was against Stuttgart that they beat 4-0. A game that for me, the most interesting thing is that as you can see this graph in the middle of my screen, you will see that the four goals that they score were in the second half. The second half in which Bayern Munich just really dominated Stuttgart. And as you can see, all the momentum was with the Bavarians. I think that this very much as well could happen with Barcelona in, in this game because Barcelona will be looking to maybe blast Bayern Munich out of the water. But let's remember that Bayern Munich have come out of a defeat against Aston Villa. So they are certainly very wary and they want to study the game. They want to study the game because they don't want to give any early chances. Bayern Munich want to come here to get a win. They really much need this win as much as Barcelona, really. Barcelona do it because of the, I don't know, the history. They're looking to be, you know, trying to put a stamp down and say, hey, we are back. But Bayern Munich have some sort of you know, pedigree that they need to maintain, a pedigree that they need to rescue because losing to Aston Villa and then losing again to Barcelona would leave them in a very bad situation. So let's see how they come into this game and looking at more matches in before that, they drew against Frankfurt 3-3 in a very interesting game uh, earlier in this month. Before that, they lost against Aston Villa in the 2nd of October. We know in the Champions League, they drew again to Leverkusen and they, well, then they beat Dynamo, they beat uh, Holstein Kien. Kiel, and then they also beat Freiburg. So those are the last matches that they've had. But as you can see that right now, Bayern Munich are in a rocky, shaky state to their season. But I might as well just think that as the better players are coming back, Vincent Company might turn this around. And let's be honest, Frankfurt and Leverkusen are also in tremendous form in the Bundesliga this season. So I, I wouldn't be that surprised with this Bayern Munich. I think people might catch them a little bit off guard because they will be expecting a team that perhaps is not as good. But hey, Bayern Munich are still the tremendous team that they are. So let's pay respects to one of the biggest clubs in European football. In the side of Barcelona, of course, we have a team that are uh, just flying, absolutely flying. They lost two games already this year, but I would say they are sort of abnormalities. They are a little bit of an alienated event. 
If we take a look at the recent form from Barcelona on screen right now to your left, you'll be able to see that Barcelona will, of course, just beat Sevilla 5-1. You can check my match reaction of that game here on the channel as well. Uh, before that, they beat Alaves 3-0. They beat Young Boys 5-0 in the Champions League. Then they lost against Osasuna 4-2. They beat Getafe 1-0, they beat Villarreal 5-1 away from home, and, well, they lost to Monaco in the very first game of the Champions League in this new format. But Osasuna and Monaco, like I was saying, it's a bit of an abnormality. First of all, with Osasuna, there were plenty of rotations, plenty of rotations that I think that a Flick prioritized the game against the young boys, because, as we know, there were already some sort of buffer in La Liga, and... Well, coming into even a Clásico now, which is the next game in, in the domestic league, Barcelona still have a buffer of three points. So he decided to, you know what, Osasuna could be a ground that it's a little bit tricky. Barcelona always struggle. They haven't won there since, like, I think two seasons ago. Uh, last season they won, but with one man, with 10 men down, you know, with, with 10 men, one man down, it was very difficult. So... It's always a ground that creates a lot of problems for Barcelona. I think that Flick understood that. And against AS Monaco, it's a red card in the very first minutes of the game. So, of course, that's always going to be very difficult for whatever team you're talking about. But here, I, once again, I think that Barcelona and this form show that, yes, perhaps they're in a better rhythm. Perhaps Barcelona have already sort of found the very first 11, you could say, and, and Bayern Munich are still tweaking some few things. However, I, I would tend to disagree. I, I do think that Barcelona here, in my opinion... Uh, we'll have a little bit of trouble creating that front, uh, that starting eleven, because there are some players injured. And as against Sevilla, as you can see later on in my match preview or my match reaction that I uploaded, uh, I talked about how still Dani Olmo didn't play a single minute in that game, so potentially he might not be fit for this game against Bayern Munich. Fermin played a lot of minutes; he was one of the first substitutes to come in. Frank de Jong didn't either play a single minute. So that's worrying signs. That's our very worrying signs because it seems that not one of Frankie or Dani Olmo might be playing this game. So Barcelona might be looking to play Ansu Fati or someone like Fermin Lopez for that extra player in, in the midfield. So let's see how it goes. On your screen right now, you're going to see the potential possible lineups. I will give you my lineup as well. In the goalkeeper position, we have Iñaki Peña. That is confirmed by the manager. Uh, I do think that someone like Chesney and his experience would have come very, very much in handy in a game like this, but he won't play. Hansi Flick has made it official that Iñaki Peña is his guy for Bayern Munich. In the defense, we have Jules Kunde, Pau Cugarsi, Inigo Martinez, and Alejandro Valle. So far, so good. That's the starting defense for Barcelona. In the midfield is where we have the questions, right? Marc Asado will play. I think that's a given because his defensive output has been very good. And particularly coming out of the Sevilla game, he had a tremendous display. Uh, then behind the striker, we got Rafinha, Pedri, and Lamin Yamal, and up top, Robert Lewandowski. But there's one still, still one position missing. Here on Sofa Score, they mention Frankie de Jong. But I think that if Frankie de Jong didn't play against Sevilla because he had a knock, I I think that he may not play even against Bayern Munich. That's my, my hot take. I really do not think that. In the game against Sevilla, Ansu Fati played almost the 90 minutes. He played 76 minutes of that game, which is very positive for someone like him. And yes, he was out of tune, but I, I've seen how Flick has managed someone like Ferran Torres at the start of the season. He was constantly giving him game time no matter what. And he was backing him even after horrible performances earlier in the campaign. So I would suggest, I would think, I wouldn't be that much surprised if Ansu Fati gets a nod here. Because if he started against Sevilla, it means that he was fit. He was fitter than Fermin. He was fitter than Frank de Jong. And he was fitter than Dani Olmo. Those are the three players that I believe could enter uh, in a contention for a position in this game and as, as a starting player. Fermin, Ansu Fati, and someone like... Um, like Frank de Jong and Dani Olmo as well, you could say, but Ansu Fati, he's the feature of all of those. That, that is so far the only indication I can get because he was the one that was, well, the deputy to replace someone like Eddie Garcia after he got injured in the pre-training before the game against Sevilla. If you want me to debate a little bit who would I put in, my personal take, like I said, would be Ansu Fati. That's what I think Flick would do. But I would actually go with someone like Fermin Lopez. I think that in a game against Bayern Munich, where perhaps at the start Bayern Munich might not might you know give the ball to Barcelona, 
I think Fermi Lopez could be very handy because he's this shadow striker. He's this guy that really knows how to find pockets of space in and around the players, the defense, and that's where the best Fermi Lopez shows up. Fermi Lopez literally did that against Napoli, I remember. He helped us many times, even in the Clásico de Bernabeu last season, doing the same thing. That's his job. That's how he scored the most goals in the Olympics this campaign. So that's where I think Fermi Lopez could really be a humongous asset for Barcelona. Nevertheless, um, Bayern Munich, his, their strategy might be a little bit different. Whilst they might still give the ball to Barcelona, I want to play devil's advocate here and say that Bayern Munich might also try to hit right from the get-go. Bayern Munich still are a very attacking side. And we must remember that this Barcelona side are not like the ones of the past, where you could give them the ball and they would just pass it horizontally for ages. You know, they will continue passing from left to right, from left to right, and they will never create any threat. Hansi Flick football is all about vertical play, very fast progression. And that's exactly what players like Rafinha and Lamin Yamal do very good in this team. Also Pedri. So it will be a, a very difficult thing. You know, it will be playing with fire for company and Bayern Munich if they decide to give the ball to Barcelona. And I think that may be where they get caught out a little bit. I think that that could surprise Bayern Munich. The main thing that Barcelona need to try and do is to go out there and try to get a goal as soon as possible and build momentum and have Bayern Munich you know, be stressful a little bit. Because let's remember, in this new format of the Champions League, you only have one opportunity. This is the only time these two will face unless they face each other in the knockout rounds. But in the group stage, you only have one try. One moment, one chance to try and beat Bayern, beat Barcelona. So, yes, I think it will be very interesting to see the very first few minutes. So, this might be one of those games that you do not want to miss. A single, a single moment. So far, if you haven't... So far, guys, if you have been enjoying this video, I might as well just remind you to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot, you know, like a lot, a lot, a lot. If you really do know YouTube, you will know that subscribes and comments are the things that it takes you forward. And I've been taking quite a while out of YouTube, but I want to get back into it. And when people like the videos, they comment. I don't know. I just like building this community. I'm talking about community. I've also talked with a platform called Big Up. Uh, that basically is like a Twitch or a kick.com, but just for football communities. It's insane. They got so many tools there that I want to start already live streaming. There are still some fixes that I need to get a handle on, but hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get a live stream done for the game against Bayern Munich. But anyhow, talking about Bayern, let's move then now to their potential 11, because there's certainly a lot of players that will be very interesting. And this starting 11 that SofaScore put up here, I do not agree with one bit. I really do not agree. I think Manuel Neuer will be there for Bayern. That's a guarantee. Rafael Guerreiro playing as a right back. Yeah, guys, that's not a mistake. That's actually how he has been playing quite a lot for Bayern Munich this year. So I would expect Guerreiro to be there as well. Uh, Dayotu Pamecano and Kim min -Jay. I think that's a given in the two center backs. Then we have Alfonso Davis on the left. We will have Joshua Kimmich and Joao Palinha because Alexander Pavlovic got an injury in the last game. Jamal Musiala playing as a number 10. I don't think that's going to happen. There were some talks about it that maybe Musiala could make it. But at the end of the day, I read many reports that he was ruled out, guys. So if you have any other news, please let me know in the comment box down below because I want to know whether Musiala comes in because he could really change the game. But the player on form for Bayern Munich, 100%, has to be Michael Olise. Coming for Crystal Palace, really such a big jump to Bayern Munich, but he's doing tremendously good. He's on fire. When we talk about, and we've been debating even, with Marca, which is an Indian YouTuber in, in our podcast, Masculine Podcast. There's a podcast dedicated to Barcelona guys that we make on a weekly basis. So you can also go check it out in the description and on my channel, Masculine Podcast. And he said that Michael Elise, he's been watching Bayern matches because he was very just curious to see how good he could actually be against Barcelona. And let me tell you that I've seen some highlights of him as well. And I believe that Michael Elise, my goodness, he could be a potential big threat for Barcelona. So we much watch out for him. He's not the player who's going to run into the space, you know, and cover a lot of ground like that. Leroy Sané is more of a player of that uh, mold. 
But Michael Elisa is that player who's going to be pinging those passes. You know, he's going to be looking for the runs from Harry Kane. He's going to be looking for Serge Gnabry. That's why it's so good a combination to have Elisa on the right-hand side and then Gnabry running at the other at the other wing and Harry Kane through the middle. I think that could be a very interesting uh, sort of events. If it's not Musiala in the number 10, I think that Thomas Müller could come in. We know that Müller have a, has a tremendous record against Barcelona no matter what he always likes scoring against Barca so I think Müller will be there Gnabry like I said already and Harry Kane as in number nine and yes this lineup still guys if you think just company the manager lowers the quality no look at you, you saw it they are really good on paper so it's gonna be a humongous game so far I believe it's the biggest game in the Champions League I have no problem with saying it I think it's the two biggest teams so far facing each other it's such a rivalry even though Barcelona always lose but my goodness it's gonna be a tremendous affair so now guys something that I want to start doing quite a lot for these previews is do a combined 11 because I think it will give you a very good understanding or quality of where the teams are at right so we have right now the 4 2 3 one which is a formation that both Bayern Munich and Barcelona play and I will try with you as well to find out what is the best lineup. So first of all, in the goalkeeper position, we have three options. We got Manuel Neuer, Chesney, and Iñaki Peña. And I think the, there's only one player that we can really put it, and that is Manuel Neuer. I think that so far, maybe if Ter Stegen was fit, it would be a different debate, but Manuel Neuer slides in there. I think that over Rafael Guerreiro, I will go with Jules Koundé. I think Jules Koundé is a given. He's the best right back so far in Europe, in my opinion, this season. One of the center backs for me is going to be Kubarsi. I think that Kubarsi really is just tremendous. Like I said in the game against Sevilla, goodness. We looked, we took a look at his stats, and he was out of this world. He won so many duels for such a young character. I'm putting next to Kubarsi Inigo Martinez as well. I think that Kim Min Ye has a very good option to be here, but the form that Inigo Martinez is showcasing this season, he needs to be there a hundred percent. Davies, for me, is the left back. Yes, I know that Alejandro Valle is having a tremendous season, but Alfonso Davies just for me has that little bit of the X factor. He's one of those players who will always shine no matter what. I mean, he will have bad games, but I mean that he has that ability to, even when having a bad game, he can still do a, a winning, a, a winning, you know, a winning opportunity. He will always have that spark in him if that comes to be. Valdez, sometimes when he gets further forward, he will sometimes struggle a bit he will not take the best decision so i think that's where davis really uh edges him in the midfield i'm gonna put uh one player that barcelona were linked with and that is joshua kimmich i think he's one of the best in his positions in this now that rodri is injured maybe he's the best in the world and next to joshua kimmich i'm gonna put pedri i think that pedri is having a tremendous uh you know start to the season he's really consistent and for me on form the best midfielder in the world i have no problem in saying it i really do not have a problem i'm gonna put on the right wing lamin jamal i think that michael olise is having a tremendous season let me know if you put olise over someone like jamal but i think that jamal is the best right winger in the world as well i have no problem it really Barcelona are playing so good i can say these things that i have never been able to say before i'm gonna go next with I think I'm going to go with Rafinha. I'm going to go with Rafinha here. I think that Rafinha slotting as a as a number 10, as a, as a cam really this year under Hansi Flick has given him that liberty to just exploit himself as a player and boost his levels to, to just, you know, otherworldly spectrums. So Rafinha is, is really being really good. His chance creation is out of this world. And on the left, I'm going to go maybe here I go with Olise or I could do... You know what? Let's do let's do this. Let's go a 442 like this and I'm going to go with Harry Kane because I can just not decide between Harry Kane and Robert Lewandowski. I think those two players deserve to be there and that will be my combined 11 for Barcelona and Bayern Munich. If you would make any changes guys, let me know in the comment box down below. But Harry Kane and Lewandowski have to be there because they're just elite strikers at the moment. They really are. If we were doing a combined level between these two and Manchester City, I would put Haaland in there because their form of absolutely these three players is top, top notch. There's not a single player right now, not another single striker that comes close to his level. You could have argued Lautaro Martinez, but he just showed that level, I think, last season. And this season, he's not been the same as he was before, but Lewandowski, Kane, and Haaland are just whew, one step above. 
And one final section, guys, before my prediction that I want to give you guys is I want to take a look, you know, at the previous games because I haven't seen or remember actually the games between Bayern Munich and Xavi. You know, Xavi took over uh, a game against Bayern Munich, I think one leg, and the other one was Ronald Koeman. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. I honestly do not remember. It was so far ago, and I've always eliminated the games from Bayern Munich out of my head. So I want to go over these games quickly. Hopefully copyright doesn't strike us. If this doesn't make it or you're going to see some choppy things, it's because of that probably. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at, and see whether, whether you know, Barcelona did good against Bayern Munich. I do not remember at all. One bit. So we have Memphis Depay on the wing. <laughs> Frankie de Jong. Oh, this is COVID era. 100%. Jordi Alba. So here we have Leroy Sané passing the ball to, you see, Robert Lewandowski is now part of Bayern Munich. So I do not remember this. Müller, that's a goal. That's a goal. That's given. Yes, that's given. What about the second goal? What about the second goal? I do not remember this one. Leroy Sané. Ay, ay, ay. I can see why people started to already scrutinize their staying all the way from here. But that shot from Sané was insane, dude. <laughs> it really was insane. Let's take a look here now. It's Davis. And this is what I'm talking about the X Factor, I think. You see? So look at that. Look at that look at that pace. Look at that speed. It's just easy on the feet of Musiala. That is Davis a hundred percent. You know, that's Davis in a nutshell. Musiala para Sane. Sane, 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 Tercena que se cae. Uy, Sane, que la pinchó por encima. Leroy Sane missing the open net there. <laughs> what is this? Kimmich para Nabri. Oh, that's a sweet goal, but who's the guy marking him? It's Balde, but with a 28. This is the other game that we missed, guys. So let's take a look. It's Neuer there in the corner. Lewandowski. Tito. Lewandowski. Oh. That's a sluggish Lewandowski. The Lewandowski that takes like one too many touches. That's the guy. Barcelona scoring against Barca. I really do not remember. Mentality was weak. That mentality of Barcelona is really weak. This is Sané. This is the second goal. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that goal. But as you can see, this Barcelona doesn't have the mentality of this Barcelona nowadays. This Barcelona will not allow for a team like Bayern Munich to just simply score a goal and they do not get back into it. They do not get back into it. So, yes, I think that we, Barcelona, should be looking to try and get a win here, of course, 100%. Will they be able to get it? That's going to be an interesting question. But Barcelona should be looking for the win. If they can beat Bayern Munich finally and convincingly with a margin of like two goals, it will be a very big stamp on European football. I tell you guys, I can guarantee you that. My prediction will be for this game, I think, a two... I'm going to say... I'm going to say Barcelona with a 3-1 win. Barcelona with a 3-1 win over Bayern Munich. I've always... I have always come here after every loss against Bayern. And let's hope that this time I come back and it's win of, with a win. So, guys, see you after Wednesday. It's going to be an interesting game. Remember to like and subscribe this, uh, subscribe to this channel. I cannot even talk. I'm nervous about this game. See you in the next one. Take care. Ciao, ciao.